Hello everyone and welcome to the second game we'll be showing from round two of this year's FIDE candidates tournament. It is again an uh, all Indian matchup, uh, Pragnananda versus Gukesh. Yesterday we had uh, Vidit versus Gukesh and tomorrow we will be having uh, Pragnananda versus Vidit. Uh, the reason for this I explained in the uh, uh, previous video where they want to uh, uh, pair players from the same uh, federations as quickly as possible in the event so they don't have to play each other. Uh, let's say in the final round and um, uh, this way of course if uh, if Prague is facing Gukesh in round one it's not as intense for them as if they were playing each other in the final round and then uh, well for the organizers imagine if uh, one of them uh, needed a win to win the candidates tournament um, yeah I mean of, of course I'm not saying that anyone would actually do that it's just the reason that the organizers are pairing them uh, so early on in the event but I'm pretty sure that uh, Prague and Gukesh, as they are good friends, even prefer that way. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure they would hate it if they, uh, you know, get the round 14 of the candidates tournament and they both need a win to win the candidates tournament. That that'd be that'd be pretty pretty tough on on any relationship, I imagine. And uh, yeah, here are the uh, well, here are some nice uh, uh, statistics from uh, from uh, Fidi's official channel on, on Twitter. Uh, so Prague 18 years old, uh, Gukesh 17 years old, Prague number 14 in the world, Gukesh number 16, uh, rating 2747-2743, peak rating 2747 and uh, Gukesh's peak rating is 2758, their head-to-head -head score, uh, 4 wins for Prague, 3 wins for Gukesh and 4 draws altogether. So Prague in the lead by by one game, uh, a nice opportunity for Gukesh to, uh, to strike back. So let's see what happens here, Prague has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to d4. Uh, pawn to d5 we have pawn to c4 and e6 so uh still can be pretty much anything and we even have a nice photo of this moment so let's um, uh you know in enjoy that for a little bit you have two nice india flags there on the table uh very nice very nice photo uh I, again i always uh ask you guys that if you spot anything really weird in the photos that you pointed out to me uh i'm sure there's always something weird at least on some of the photos uh, but yeah let's check it out uh pawn to e6 we have knight to f3 knight to f6 and now pawn to g3 going for the catalan knight to c3 still the most popular g3 second most popular uh, and now you could go for bishop to e7 d captures and c4 bishop to b4 check those are some of the uh, most popular option uh Gukesh goes for bishop to b4 check and now uh usually the bishop to d2 is played here bishop to d2 and then either bishop goes back or you play pawn to a5 this is the uh the, the normal stuff but here after bishop to b4 check Prague goes for knight to c3 and this is a, a very rare move but it, it is uh played by none other than Magnus Carlsen and Daniel Dubov so it is from uh team Carlsen and some of uh some very interesting games that were, were played by them with this knight to c3 idea so okay d captures on c4 and bishop to g2 we have castles castles uh, and now knight to c6. Uh, we have pawn to a3, and this is now already uh, transposed into the Nimzo Indian defense, the Kasparov system. Uh, a3 challenges the bishop, bishop back to e7, and now pawn to e4 by Prague. Uh, uh, we have pawn to a6, and now bishop to e3. Again, all very standard stuff, nothing new here. Pawn to b5, and now uh, queen to e2. Preparing to bring the rooks into the game, bishop to b7. Rook a to d1 and now knight to a5 uh, going for that b3 square and also freeing up the pawn so you can advance it to c6 or c5 if needed. Uh, and here pawn to d5 striking in the center you have to capture it not much you can do there d captures uh, e captures on d5 and now there are a couple of games where e captures on d5 was played and also knight to h4 is a known move uh, but pragnananda i imagine uh, alongside peter sviller who is his second for the fide candidates tournament plays pawn to e5 and it is now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game and what's interesting about this is that uh, up until this point uh, prague spent well a fair little little time less than 10 minutes on the clock and Gukesh already spent uh, over 50 minutes so almost a full hour which is basically half of your time uh, so okay knight to e8 uh, and now we have pawn to e6 and uh, here uh, at, at this moment uh, really uh, it is a drastic time difference so uh, Gukesh now has half Prague's time and the reason this e6 move is so powerful is that it's not good for white but to calculate it properly uh, I imagine you need an engine by your side because uh, well Gukesh did not go for the for the absolute top move I will show it to you because it's really interesting 
uh, it's f captures on e6, and now after knight to d4, of course, you want to go after uh, this move, queen to d6, okay, nothing weird there, and now after bishop to f4, forcing the queen to move, you sacrifice the exchange, okay, this is still not weird or anything, uh, both of them can calculate uh, this far, but now c6 is the move you have to play, uh, and it just looks uh, not all that impressive for black. Uh, you sacrifice the exchange, your knight is stuck on a5, your bishop really stuck on b7. How is this anything? And also the e6 pawn is now hanging. What is this? I mean, uh, point is that after knight captures on e6, you will play knight to f6. And now after rook f to e1, again, looks awesome for white, you will play rook to e8. And now after pawn to f5, again, looks great for white. Uh, you will play bishop to c8. This is how you activate the bishop. And finally, after knight to e4, going after the queen as the d pawn is pinned, you will capture on e4. And after f captures on e4, you will play bishop to f6. And now your position comes alive. Uh, and your position is just, uh, well, perfectly fine. Nothing uh, nothing wrong there. Uh, and you will even have uh, some sort of an edge. Uh, later on, you can move the knight. You can play a5, b4. You can play c5, d4, d3, uh, and so on. So that's how you do it. But unless you're, you're willing to spend insane amount of time and you're able to actually properly calculate this, you will not play F captures on E6. And Gukesh doesn't. He already uh, has a half Prague's time. He plays pawn to F5. And he even invested 27 minutes in this pawn to F5 move. And now the position is uh, roughly equal. Uh, which is great for Prague as he still has almost the full two hours on his clock. Uh, knight to e5. Again, without spending time, Prague just continues with the strongest moves. Knight to f6. Uh, and now it seems that uh, Prague also runs out of book. Here, uh, Prague had uh, an hour and 50 minutes on the clock. Uh, and there are many good moves here for white, which sort of uh, hold equilibrium. For example, knight f7 is a good move, bishop to g5 uh, is a good move, rook f d1 is a good move. So these are all natural moves that you would play, uh, I always like to say, even against your uncle, as they are just good. Uh, but Prague went for queen to c2, and there's just something wrong with this move. The problem is, uh, Gukesh doesn't spot it. And what's wrong with this move is that uh, if you play pawn to c5 here, uh, there are tactics that, that work in your favor, specifically because of the weird placement of the queen on c2. Prague, of course, just wanted to pick up the, the f5 uh, pawn. Uh, but now the idea is that if you go after this d5 pawn, uh, and let's say knight captures on d5, there's this knight to d7 move, and uh, it would mean that you will now have to give back material. But now when the queen is on c2, there's knight captures on e3, with an attack on the queen on c2, and after f captures, you'll play bishop captures on g2, and after queen captures, now let's say something like c3, you mess up white's pawn structure here, b captures g6, and black is now perfectly fine, uh, even a, a little bit better. However, after queen to c2, Gukesh played pawn to c6, which is again a, a fine move, and Prague just captures on f5, and now this e6 pawn is mighty dangerous. Uh, we have queen to e8 by Gukesh, uh, trying to maybe, uh, well, also adding more defense here, but uh, also queen to h5 might be an idea. So knight to f7, stopping that and inviting rook captures on f7. And really, if Gukesh wanted to, he could just capture on f7, uh, he would uh, be down the exchange, but he would be up two pawns, and once those pawns uh, start marching forward, uh, he's definitely better here. Uh, but he was already very low on time. He played bishop to c8, and now it's 24 minutes for Gukesh uh, and 54 minutes for Prague. For that queen to c2 move, which was Prague's really first uh, move of the game that he played on his own, I believe, or maybe he just mixed up preparation, I think he spent like 40 minutes, maybe e e even more. Uh, so, okay, we have rook f to e1, and now knight to b7. And here it's... a uh, extremely complicated position and i could just ask you to pause the video here and try to find the the most interesting move you would play there are many positions where i could ask you to pause the video but uh, i i felt like this one was was most interesting as uh, there's no way you you think of this during the game so what would you play here feel free to pause the video and try to find the the best way for uh, white to continue while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is uh, Knight Captures on D5. That's the move. And now look at why. You're not going to believe why. C Captures on D5. Now you're going to play Rook Captures on D5. 
and now you cannot touch the rook. If you touch the rook, knight captures on d5, then there's bishop captures on d5, and after, let's say, knight to d6, going after your queen here, you will just move the queen, and now the rook on a8 is hanging, and now uh, there's not much you can do here. For example, uh, you, you have to play bishop to b7, but it's not uh, not really optimal. Uh, however, if you go for knight captures on f7 and you attack the white queen here, there's e captures on f7 and uh, black is now lost. So it was uh, actually uh, a fairly good attempt um, at going for something. Let's say rook captures uh, on f7 and it seems like everything is perfectly fine. You are very happy to give up this rook, but bishop d4. <laughs> Look at this. Threatening checkmate, the rook cannot move, the rook is pinned, also the rook is pinned, so bishop is being threatened, the rook is hanging, uh, it's just uh, terrible. If you play king f8 to unpin the rook, then, then you will capture the uh, rook, and now it's equal material, but, uh, well, the white, the black king is on f8, the, the black's position completely busted, this would be very nice for Prague. So objectively equal, but uh, practically a very, very good attempt for, for Prague, who had a much better situation on the clock. But he played bishop to g5. Here, uh, uh, he spent more than 40 minutes on this move, uh, and basically the two moves that Prague made, where he invested a lot of time, were not bad, not mistakes, but were suboptimal. And, uh, uh, but again, Gukesh doesn't uh, uh, take real advantage of it. He just played rook to a7. He wanted the, the, the rook on the 7th rank to help out with the defense. Uh, but the really tricky move here, and I will show it, is a, it's a classical game, knight to c5. And if you're wondering, okay, what's with knight to c5? Well, look at this. Bishop captures on f6. Bishop captures on e6, attacks the queen, and now knight to h8 with check. Uh, of course, you don't capture. If you capture, then rook captures on e6 will be a, a big problem. Uh, but if you go king to h8, then bishop captures on g7, check, king captures, and now rook captures on e6, where if you capture the, the queen, knight captures with check, and then you're also going to pick up the bishop. So best for black would be knight captures on e6, and after queen captures, just king to h8, and black will be uh, better here. Uh, although with a, with a very tricky position with an open king, but better. Uh, but after bishop to g5, Gukesh played rook to a7 and still invested quite some time. Now it's 11 minutes for Prague and 14 minutes Gukesh. So Prague, who so severely surprised Gukesh, uh, is now the one struggling with time. And it's only move 21. They still need to make 19 more moves to reach time control. So bishop captures on f6, bishop captures, and now bishop captures on d5. So... Uh, Prague has, a, of course, a, a, almost a full grasp of what the position is hiding. Uh, he just, uh, um, um, well, uh, is uh, having a, a hard time maneuvering the, the position with uh, sufficient time on the clock. See, captures, knight captures, and now bishop to e7. And uh, here, uh, well, the position is now lost for Prague unless he plays knight, knight h6 check. And it's a, it's, a, it's a draw offer. Knight h6 check is a draw offer. Uh, if you move the king, uh, uh, then of course you just bring the knight back. And if you capture, then queen to g4 with check. And now uh, if the king goes uh, to h8, then you even have queen to d4 check to pick up this rook. Uh, and if you don't, uh, well, it's just going to be... Uh, 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 sufficient for a draw. For example, bishop to g5, you will play queen to d4. Again, attack the rook. Again, you freed up d7 square for the pawn. Uh, the rooks come alive with the black king so wide in the open, you have sufficient uh, drawing means. But after bishop to e7, queen to g4 was played, and now Gukesh just plays knight to d8. A strongest move, uh, always hardest to, find, hardest to find is with the knight back. Now he adds more pressure to the e6 pawn, he's attacking the f7 pawn, and Prague finds nothing better than to go for knight captures on d8. Again, it had he more time on the clock, the queen to d4 is, uh, is, uh, is a very interesting practical attempt, because now after knight captures on e6, you will sacrifice the knight to open up the black king and now capture on a7 and okay uh gukesh would have two bishops for a rook but uh, maybe you know it's still possible to draw this with the king uh, wide in the open like this but prague went for knight captures on d8 we have bishop captures and now queen to d4 so similar but not quite rook to b7 we have rook to e4 
Uh, now comes a bishop to f6, attacking the queen, a queen to e3, and the bishop back to e7. And now uh, Prague is just um, uh, stuck with a, with a worse position. He starts uh, advancing the h1, he wants to go h5, h6, uh, queen to c6. We have pawn to h5, now bishop to c5. And with the open f file, not much for Prague to do here. Queen to g5 was played. Now, okay, you could capture on f2 right away. Uh, Gukesh went for bishop captures on e6 first. h6, of course, it doesn't really do all that much as the rook here is covering the g7 pawn. Uh, rook captures on f2 was played and it was in this position on move 33 that Pregnaranda resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So really, really a tough match um, uh, for, for both of them. I imagine a tough matchup. Uh, Prague, uh, really surprising Gukesh. Gukesh had to burn a whole lot of time just to figure out how to survive this position. But then when it was Prague's time to finally, you know, do something with the position that he has created and prepared, uh, he either mixed up preparation or, or didn't uh, find the best way to continue. So as they say, a man surprised is half beaten, but as it would seem only half beaten. Uh, yeah, the game would continue. Of course, you have to unpin from this. You would play something like King to H1 and then like Rook F, sorry, not Rook F6, Rook F5 uh, and not much to uh, consider here. Best uh, attempt would maybe be Rook captures on E6, uh, but it only looks good. Queen captures, Knight to F6 check sort of to gain access to the D8 square, but just Queen captures and after Rook to D8 check, you can play King F7 and you escape. There's nothing much for White uh, to do here. Uh, it, it's time to resign, but it was also time to resign here, where Prague actually resigned. So, yeah, uh, another another decisive game from the round two of the FIDE candidates tournament. Uh, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there might be more decisive games, so uh, you know, stay tuned for. Uh, I'm going to cover those as well. Uh, and yeah, very nicely done. Very much looking forward to what happens next in the FIDE candidates tournament. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, this coverage as well. Uh, I would like to thank Andreas Rosenthal, David Gasparian, Derek King, uh, Henry Hunt, uh, Max End for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continue the coverage of the FIDE Candidates Tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.